charges against the school board in search of a new contract. Sex shops lose two battles in the war over adult entertainment in northern Michigan, and a drunk driving road test gives students a crash course in staying alive. And now from TV 9 and 10, Northern Michigan's news leader, this is the Nightside Report. Two more setbacks tonight for sex shops in Traverse City. Good evening, I'm Jed Bowl. And I'm Deanna Finney. The first blow came in federal court. Then tonight, Traverse City commissioners threw the second punch. Following the lead of the county and other townships, the Traverse City Commission introduced an ordinance tonight that would regulate adult businesses inside the city limits. The ordinance was sparked by word of an adult entertainment store opening on Garfield Avenue. The city over the years has looked at uh, these types of ordinances and has discussed them, but that uh, possibility of having a business on Garfield, I think, uh, lit the fire, and that's why the city and, of course, the number of entities around uh, Traverse City have adopted similar ordinances. Earlier today, a federal judge ruled in favor of Blair Township's moratorium against sexual-oriented businesses. The store, called Talk of the City, took the township to court to try and prevent it from enforcing its adult business moratorium. Gay and lesbian activists in Traverse City want to make sure their rights are protected in the job market. Tonight, the Human Rights Commission recommended to move forward with plans to promote and amend the city's hiring policies to include sexual orientation. The commission says it's important employment decisions are based on job performance and not on sexual preference. We're hoping that the city of Traverse City will take a stand to say, you know, we don't tolerate discrimination among any protected class, you know, among anyone. And, and people spoke tonight about protected classes. And if we have to include sexual orientation to become a protected class for the city, I guess that's what we have to do. The Human Rights Commission hopes its recommendation will be approved at the June 17th Traverse City Commission meeting. The Traverse City School Board is under fire by the Teachers Union for its lengthy contract negotiations. Today, hundreds of teachers picketed the school administration building after the union filed an unfair labor practice against the school board. TV 9 10's Kimberly Purdy joins us now from our Traverse City Bureau with more on this story. Kimberly, what are the two sides saying? Well, Deanna, the teachers union says that a year is long enough, that the school board is stalling, and they have not negotiated in good faith. But the board says these latest moves by the union are just tactics, and that the board has indeed negotiated in very good faith. After a year of negotiations, teachers say the school board is stalling and hasn't bargained in good faith. They filed an unfair labor practice in Lansing to get their point across. We have gone all year without, um, with continual delays on the part of the board. They still have not responded to us economically. We've only received one economic proposal from the association thus far, and that was only five weeks ago, or approximately on the 4th of April and since then have responded with two of the board's economic proposals. The superintendent canceled the board meeting because two members are out of town and one is ill, saying that there are too many important issues to discuss and that everyone should be present. But teachers feel differently. They say it's a ploy to avoid the publicity the meeting would create if held during the picket. There's some major issues and uh, dealings that we're uh, uh, dealing with this year, and we feel we want to have the full board there when we address them and be sure that our community knows that we're listening and we're hearing them. And I don't think we can do that with part of our board not there. So that it had nothing to do, and again, the media was there, the picketing was occurring, and you know, the coverage was there. So this, you know, that was going to go on regardless, so it had nothing to do with this at all. The union says there may be more picketing. We have a whole host of strategies we haven't tried yet, and we have explored the, as you know, the, the option of striking. We expect this. I want you to know that the unfair labor practice and the picketing is not unexpected. These are tactics that the union and association typically uses in situations such as this. Tonight's school board meeting was rescheduled for May 20th when all the board members are expected to be present. Deanna? Well, when are the two sides expected to meet again? Well, the next mediation meeting is scheduled for May 21st, but there's a very good chance teachers will show up for the school board meeting on May 20th. All right, thank you. Kimberly mm -hmm. Purdy reporting tonight from our Traverse City Bureau. A Wexford County couple with plans for a nudist camp will have to go to court to fight for it. Pat and Jan Bell want to start the camp on this property outside Mesick. Last month, the zoning board rejected their plan, citing traffic problems. 
Tonight, the couple presented a revised version to the Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting was packed with opponents to nudism. The board stood firm rejecting the plan, and the Bells believe they're being discriminated against. It became a morality issue. Uh, it was not to be. It was to be an issue of whether the campsite fit in the surroundings. We are zoned forest recreational. The whole 160-acre section is. The board says it's a matter of too many campsites and not enough parking. The Bells argue their proposal is legal, and they will take it to circuit court. A charred shell is all that remains of a house in Kalkaska this evening. Fire ripped through this home on M72 near the fairgrounds about 10 o'clock this morning. Firefighters say the home was engulfed in flames before they could get to the scene. No one was home when the fire started and there were no reports of injuries. Traffic along M72 was rerouted for a short time while the fire was being fought. Investigators think the fire was started by an electrical problem. Setting trash on fire may not sound like a prank, but it's surely a stunt that nearly ruined one northern Michigan business. Fire officials aren't saying if this dumpster fire was deliberately set at 2 a.m. behind the Comfort Fur Furniture Center. They say such fires are often lit by teens playing pranks, but this one got out of control as the building caught fire. Expensive and dangerous, teens caught setting such fires may also get their parents in hot water. The parents need to realize that they are responsible for their children and that there is restitution involved in these. Uh, just that plastic top that's on the dumpsters quite often will cost up to a couple hundred dollars. Um, we, the fire department, may have three to five hundred dollars in equipment and manpower called out because of uh, that type of fire. And that's just if it stays in the dumpster, if it doesn't go anyplace else. A growing number of these fires is flaring up in northern Michigan. Fire officials warn the penalties for such crimes can run into thousands of dollars and time in jail, even for first-time offenders. Search teams continue to find body parts, not bodies, in the Florida Evergl Everglades, where ValueJet Flight 592 crashed Saturday. So far, seven body bags of remains have been recovered. The crash killed 109 people. The black box data recorder has been recovered from the wreckage. The recorder, which could provide clues to the cause of the crash, will be sent to the National Transportation Safety Board headquarters for analysis. A spokesman says he's not sure whether another black box, the cockpit voice recorder, has been recovered. The park place in Traverse City is getting new owners and possibly a facelift. The Rotary president says they have a purchase agreement and that the sale is expected to be finalized before an 11 a.m. press conference tomorrow. One of the buyers in the partnership is Regency Inns Management Incorporated out of South Dakota. That company currently owns 38 hotels across the country including a Best Western in Kalamazoo. To, uh, to be in here in Traverse City, uh, the name of the partnership would let, one, would let you know that it, this is a partnership that was established uh, to own this hotel and to operate it. Although the buyers haven't disclosed a purchase price, they did say the Park Place will keep its name. The prospective owners say they plan to put a lot of money into the hotel and may do some renovations. Good evening, everyone. On our first look at the weather here, we start with a gorgeous shot from Kim Purdy. Nice big shot here of some daffodils. Beautiful sunshine shining through the, the petals and the gorgeous golden glow there. We had the sunshine today, but it means we have clear skies tonight, or at least it might mean that, and it does. Lower Michigan under completely clear skies. Still some cloudiness, of course, across to the north. We've got a huge area of low pressure here. Most of the activity is around the edge, but this patch of clouds a mid-level mid wave of energy rolling through, and it did touch off some sprinkles earlier in the evening across portions of the Upper Peninsula. I think the sprinkles are over. The clouds are thinning out. We'll see more of a variable cloud pattern as we finish out the rest of the night. We'll be back in a moment and talk about what these clear skies mean in terms of temperatures for tonight, but we need to look in on some sports action right now. Scott. Okay, thank you, Dave. One NBA, NBA and one NHL playoff game tonight. In the NBA, the Atlanta Hawks have extended their series with the Orlando Magic, 104-99 to in the final there. The Blackhawks trying to stave off elimination at home with the Avalanche tonight. Colorado leading third period, 3-2. And the Cubs are under the lights tonight at Wrigley with Houston. And they beat the Astros 6-0. Details on these stories and more in 15. Now back to Deanna and Jet. Still to come on the night side, report some high school students take a driving test through an impossible course. Find out more. And coming up, did you ever wonder who cleans up northern Michigan's roadkill? Well, you'll find out who and why they like it. Don't go away.